uh, Hugo, you want to show us NFT storage? Yes. Let me just share my screen. Get this out of the way. Can you see the NFT storage? Awesome homepage. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So last week I presented this. Uh, this was still a little bit bare bones. Right now, yeah, we have almost all the functionality uh, working, plus some awesome docs. Uh, and I'm going to show you to you. So this is pretty much the same. We did some tweaks in the copy. We tweaked some of the examples that we have here. Um, and the first new thing that I'm going to show you is the, the documentation for the, the client library. So everything, all the API is documented. Uh, we are using the, the TypeScript uh, types that we, that we have in the library. Uh, this works in Node, it works in the browser seamlessly. Uh, and the users, the devs from the NFT hack can just go here, check out the examples, check out the parameters, check out all the API, um, how they need to send the, the files, each method, it's all explained here with examples. It's all very simple. Um, and they have all the documentation they need it's all here. It's all generated from the code. Easy to update if we need to do some some changes while the hack the hackathon is going on. We can do it, and it, it will all be reflected instantaneously in the in the website. Um, so another new thing that we have is the um, the uh, an open API schema for the HTTP API itself. So. This is also available for the users. Uh, the four endpoints are all um, described here. Some descriptions explaining stuff, all the parameters, all the request uh, body types and ways to do it. Examples for the responses, um, the different responses actually, the, the, the when everything goes well for the errors and everything, they can even, uh, try it out. Like you can go to the, um, you can go back, go inside your uh, account, uh, get one of the keys that you have, go to the API docs, put your token there, and now you can just test it out. You'll choose a file. And you execute, hopefully this will work. Yeah, that's it. We have our file here, our links here, everything went well. We got the response headers, and they don't, need, don't even need to write any code, then they can try the API out um, in the docs. They can do the same thing for the other endpoints. You can just list everything. And these are all my files. Um, and yeah, everything for the, the, the four endpoints. Each type is um, described completely. Uh, the NFT uh, one is the, the most important one. So everything explained like the pinning data. This is related to the pinning services API. Uh, all the files, if they, if they upload, upload the directory, uh, all the links. Uh, this actually, we removed this. Uh, so this is, this is uh, I have a PR to remove these links because we think we, we shouldn't actually uh, give them like this. So we're going to improve the documentation to explain to the users how to create these, these uh, URLs, either the IPFS one or the HTTP one, because we don't want them to just take these from the response and put it in, in the blockchain directly. We just want them to put the CID there and then they can create whatever URL they need, like the, the IPFS one, they can use whatever gateway they like. Um, and it's, we think it's better to educate them that you can build out your URLs just with the CID 
and then you don't need to update your smart contract because a gateway is down or whatever uh, it's happening um, because the URL is broken. Um, this is an old version, so it's missing the deals uh, field, which um, uh, after this call, I'm going to push it to production, but we already have the, um, the 5 point bit um, uh, schema ready. Just needs to be pushed pushed to production. Um, yeah. So one last thing it would be to just show you. I don't know if last week we already had the upload bits, uh, but yeah, you can also upload directly through the the interface. Um, and yeah, shows up here. You have your keys. You have your files. You have your docs. Everything is nice. Uh, and well explained, some easy to follow examples and the comprehensive documentation already there. And we are also updating uh, right now the terms of service that we just got from legal. And yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, please. I guess I'm curious between Hugo and Yusuf, like in terms when it comes to best practices for what people should link in to the nft metadata body and how they should be it's like great put it on ipfs absolutely best practice then what um you know ideally you're not choosing a specific gateway url that you know locks you into a particular provider and then that um link can break um in the future um ipfs colon slash slash is more agnostic than that but doesn't work in all browsers um so it sounds like Hugo, you guys are recommending um, peer CIDs to be the thing that you stick in the NFT. Whereas I think Yusuf, your tutorial recommends IPFS colon slash slash. So yeah, we should figure out <laughs> what we recommend. I, I don't know. I just went with IPFS colon slash slash URIs without really giving it a whole lot of thought. But because I wanted to avoid HTTP, but it does. It is problematic because like you have to have special support for that. I guess. But which you would also need for bare CIDs. But so I guess if you're having to special case something, maybe it's better to just use the CID like you're saying, and then um, instruct people to build the URI out of that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So we have had a lot, lots of discussions about like the the NFT asset itself plus the metadata. Um, there's also like uh, inside the metadata, it's supposed to be a a, a new URI there pointing to either a preview of the actual NFT assets or the actual assets, um, but it would be useful. Or like one of the discussion that we had is like, how do we uh, upload everything like data assets plus metadata in one go into IPFS, uh, probably everything wrapped inside the directory, but before we do that, we would need to update the metadata with the right CID of the root folder that gets us to a, a weird point that we need to figure out. Um, and yeah, and we need to kind of see if it's, if this is acceptable for the devs. That's, I think it's the biggest uh, uh, thing that we need to learn from this hackathon is how to engage with people in these regards, how to educate them, what's the best way to do it, in, IPFS and at the end of it, maybe we have a story to tell that actually explains step-by-step, step, okay, if you want to use IPFS, this is the best way, this is the way we, we recommend. And it's the most agnostic, most scalable, most decentralized way we can provide to you. And this is it, we have docs here and you can follow. Yeah, my, my slight nudge is to I agree with Iraqli's comment in the chat that using the IPFS colon slash slash seems like a good future forward approach whereby um, when when every uh, browser is like brave and resolves these things directly or opera or other um, that people will be able to look directly within like the NFT metadata and these links will be linkable and um, and choose their gateway or local node of choice. Uh, kind of directly without them having to do like an extra rewrite step. Um, so I feel like that should be the optimal one, but we should make sure that we have that then pushes us to have good support whenever you're um, 
you know, for IPFS colon slash slash in lots of form in, in lots of places. There's also a feature on the table that we're considering after the hackathon to just mint the, the not not mint the not mint the NFT, but actually create the metadata um, for them essentially. And then so when we do that, we could like always do this right and not have this problem. <laughs> Yeah, I, great point. Like, I'm curious what's what's next. You guys have sprinted to this deadline to in order to get this up and ready for people um, uh, for for today. But I imagine there's probably a lot of stuff that didn't make it on the sprint uh, cadence. So what's what's next for for this project? I, I'm I'm trying to keep it a little bit loose just so that we can take in all the feedback and then look through it and prioritize it. Um, but right now we're like actively sort of in the hackathon channels, like taking in feedback and putting it into a doc in Notion so that um, anybody can see. Um, but yeah, I I think that feature is probably the the number one one. And then there are broader questions around like what are the limitations of the service? How broadly can we give it out? How long can we really do this for free? Like what is the long term strategy for you know subsidizing this? That kind of stuff. And are we actively going to be making um, Filecoin deals with the NFT data throughout this weekend? Um, is that like an active part piece of this as well, or is that a secondary bit? Correct. This is active. I mean, uh, we don't have enough NFTs just yet to even try to batch anything because there are just too, too few still. Uh, we expect this to ramp up uh, during uh, Alan's talk tomorrow. Uh, the presentation, but uh, yes, uh, effectively, our SLA for this like 24, 48 hours after that, your stuff will show up and we'll be mentioning that uh, through, towards the end of the hackathon and after the hackathon, they should go back to the same API endpoints and check out where they are still planted on Falcon and stuff like that. Nice. I think Jeremy has a giant data set of NFTs he's building that can help you get over some of those deal limits pretty quickly. 